well, on this mushroom trip I had, it definitely seemed like the spirit world. It seemed like a realm of spirits, and it showed me that it showed me this is going to sound ridiculous, but it showed me that this world is a delayed reaction of the spirit world. And that spirits intentionally lose themselves in this physical manifestation. They're intentionally losing themselves here. And that we have the choice to go back into oneness, but we like the community. We like the warmth of each other's energy you know we we don't want to merge back into oneness i mean no there's no there's no even merging into oneness you are essentially one by default you can't merge into oneness because that kind of defeats the definition of oneness but you can go back into source if you want to at any time but we choose to seemingly lose ourselves for eternity because it's fun, I guess. I don't know. The same reason you like being around your friends or the same reason um, the same reason you like to draw or lose yourself in any kind of creation. Um, so that's what the mushroom told me. Um, I don't think they're dead people because the ego doesn't exist and the mushroom has shown me that many times. That the ego is just thoughts. And you're not your thoughts. Your thoughts are just sort of judgments of what's happening. You are what's happening. And then you have thoughts that judge what's happening. And that creates this illusion of um, persona. And, uh, you know, we sort of grab a hold of things that make us feel good or things that get us to where we want to be. Like that's why people wear Supreme and these kind of things because they think that this will lead them to a destination that, that will make them happy. And it's all comes back to a false identification with the ego, the false identification with the body. We don't know who we are. So we attach ourselves to, Symbols, we cling to symbols as a desperate attempt to discover any glimpse into what we are or what our place is here in this world. But, I don't know. The beings are, I believe, as real as the beings in your dreams and potentially even as real as the beings in your life. <clears throat> because um i mean if you get into some of this uh the and i i mean come on I, I don't have any degree in this stuff but if you get into some of this quantum physics and all this kind of stuff it kind of shows it shows that there is something interesting happening <laughs> at the very least i can say that it shows that something interesting is happening how particles are existing in super states or existing in a state of potential waiting to be realized. Or, um, I mean, certainly we know that this world, as I said, was a delayed reaction of the spiritual world. We understand that this world is the manifestation of some higher, some higher world, some subtle world, some reality beyond the, the reaches of what we can perceive. And we know that because they know that we're made up of atoms. And you can't see any of the atoms that make up our body. You can't see that you are actually a mosh pit of tiny particles spinning as solar systems spin. You are a solar system of spinning things. And this is the realization of those spinning things. The visible, physical manifestation of tiny things. And um, <clears throat> I guess that could be the spiritual world, that non-physical dimension in which makes up this physical, physical dimension. And I remember talking to the mushroom 
um, because my grandma just passed away. R.I.P. Grandma, miss you, love you. And um, I was worried about this. My grandma didn't die yet when I was taking the mushrooms. And the mushrooms, they laughed at me basically and said, don't worry about her trip. That's her trip. She'll figure it out. You know, we have done this before. And you will figure this out over and over and over again as your grandma has. And, um, but it showed me that you can actually communicate with energies in that dimension. These beings that you're talking to on DMT or mushrooms or some people, you know, in ayahuasca, which is a form of DMT. A way to communicate with these beings and it showed me this in my mushroom trip, and I'm exposing a lot of very vulnerable information. I'm, I'm, I realize that this is the kind of information that gets people locked into schizophrenic hospitals. Sorry. I got the hiccups. But um, it showed me that geometry can help condense spiritual energy. Making geometry in this realm can help condense spiritual energy and it can help be a bridge to gap the dimensions. And um, certain flowers and plants help also be a bridge. That's what kind of what mushrooms is. That's um, I was shown the marigold Mexican flower is the, the flower that they use for uh, Dia de la Muerte. The Day of the Dead, um, the flower that they used for that was shown to me in my mushroom trip as being a bridge to the spirit world. Um, Gopal, which is a type of incense, was shown to help. Tobacco is another one that was shown to... And I don't know. This is just what the mushroom was telling me. <clears throat> and uh, I'm inclined to believe that we are tapping into the realm of the plants, the intelligence of the plants. The ancestors, that's why I think they called it the, the realm of the ancestors because, you know, these plants and mushrooms have have been around for a long time. They have a deep history of, uh, of, of evolution. And um, I think that potentially you are tapping into that knowledge and maybe some kind of DNA communica communication is happening or something, some kind of blend of... Of worlds, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Um, you can definitely have demonic experiences, for sure. Um, I had a friend who had a very hellish DMT trip where he was stuck in an infinite thought loop where he couldn't... He couldn't get out of this loop. It was just a re... You remember, like, um... What's that movie? Doctor Strange where uh, Doctor Strange is just repeating the same moment over and over again to torture that demon. My friend was experiencing that, but except a demon was doing that to him. And I'm not sure if these are intelligences that are that are doing this to you on purpose, or if this is just some kind of trauma or fear that you have, and it's it's crystallizing itself because you're confronting it and you just can't surrender to it so it just kind of builds and builds and builds you know it's like if you sit there and think about something the anticipation builds and builds and builds and builds and manifests and crystallize it can crystallize into a physical shake or physical anxieties to all these kind of things you know you're biting your nails your legs are shaking could that be something like that could you just be manifesting a fear? Um, or or is it real? The shamans would say it was real. Um, I usually go with the idea that it's in your head. But I don't know. After this last, this last mushroom trip really shook me up and really... Um, it's so direct. The voice of the mushroom is so direct. And it's so... It's so... Um, 
not you. And I guess that's what schizophrenics say is that they can hear things in their heads that isn't them. And, that, and that's what it feels like. It feels like somebody is hijacking your inner speaker and um, it's like getting plugged in and downloaded for like an upgrade. And you have to invoke the voice of the mushroom if you want to communicate with it. That's why everyone doesn't have this experience is because not always is ceremony important. It can happen without ceremony. It could just happen because the conditions are right and that's your karma. And, uh, but if you want to have this experience, you have to invoke the voice of the mushroom. You have to invoke, invo invoke the voice of the spirits, the voice of the ancestors. You know, this last mushroom trip really seemed like, it really seemed like, um, the kind of shit that you see in movies about magic and witchcraft. Like it showed me a lot of geometry and how geometry, um, geometry is, is, um, useful in ceremony, which seems kind of, I don't know. It seems kind of witchy and kind of Hollywood fake, but, uh, it was showing me that the spirits, the geometry is, is helps. It helps be a bridge to the spirit world. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. The, the thing is, is that, um, I'm not alone and that's what's that's what also is very reassuring to me is that like this girl I was really happy to see that she had an experience in which she was talking about meeting them and that these voices and people were reassuring her that that things were going to be okay and they weren't using language but they were speaking to her through feelings and that has been my experience is that they talk to you it's like when you have a thought but you can't explain that thought but it's just a feeling that you know. It's like, fuck, I know it, but I just can't put it into words. They talk to you like that. That's how the voice communicates with you. And I've had it speak to me through an actual voice also, but it seems to be through symbols. And I mean, that's essentially what language is, is, is symbols. But it's reassuring to know that these experiences are reproducible. That a girl from Canada can have the same experience that a shaman in the jungle is talking about or that me that I'm talking about. And I don't know shit about this stuff. I'm only, I'm, I, I had these experiences and now I'm just trying to figure out how it was possible for me to have those experiences while everyone else is like focused on, on this, 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 this cultural identity that was given to us. For example, like, this is who you have to be, a productive member of society. You know, stand up straight, make sure you're dressed for the role. <sighs> like, while everyone's doing that, I'm having this, these crazy experiences that other cultures, that these ancient cultures have been talking about, that our culture has written off as fairy tale. It's put me in a weird position because you can hardly talk about it. Uh, but it's reassuring. It's reassuring to see people like that, that, that girl, that Canadian girl having that experience. Um, it's nice in a way because it shows that, um, this is interesting at the very least that you could have an experience that seems as real as this. And that leaves the question to what is reality? What is reality at that, at that point? If I can have an experience through eating something that grows from the earth. If I can eat something and it puts me into another reality that seems as solid as this reality while I'm in it. Just as much as I get lost in a dream or just as much as I'm lost in this physical world. What does that mean for reality? Where does that leave us? What does that say for consciousness? That consciousness is so faulty that reality can be stripping away and that you don't 
know what is real and what's not, where the boundaries of imagination and reality become 